you see when you see this? Or this? Or this? I would like to share with you what others see. In this case, an urban planner I spoke to saw a monumental green structure in a 1930s neighbourhood. A social worker saw a place with an invisible barrier to many local residents. One of the gardeners saw a place that brought him back on track. And the local food bank saw an important supplier of fresh vegetables. Different people see the same plot of land differently because they attach different values to it. Take, for example, Jos. You see him here with the wheelbarrow. He asked the municipality of Groningen if they could help him to find a place for a garden that could produce food for the local food bank and could employ people with low employability. The municipality liked the idea and they found a plot. And look what it looks right now. Nice, isn't it? It supplies the food bank with fresh vegetables every week. But at some point he realized that not everyone had the same feeling about it. Support for the garden just came from one municipal department. What about other departments? Part of the neighbouring residents didn't really connect to the place and felt a bit excluded even. He wondered what other perspectives on the garden and the plot of land could be, how more people could be reached and to what extent things could go together. He liked to make a stronger case for his garden. This concern to make stronger cases for bottom-up initiatives is central in the NWO SURF R-Link project of the Amsterdam University of Applied Sciences in which we work together with a large research consortium under the guidance of Wageningen University. Bottom-up planning for urban space is sometimes seen as the holy grail when making decisions less political and reaching consensus. This is a misconception. There are and always will be conflicting views and interests. A garden or a playground is not the same as a place to walk the dog and let him poo. A garden that produces a steady supply for the food bank is not the same as a meeting place for local residents. Assigning a place for urban green and food production excludes getting a market price for it. Of course, sometimes things can go together, but in the end, decisions made on the use of land give some views and interests priority over others. Thus, they are political decisions. The question is how to deal with that reality. One way is to go out and ask people about their views. But it is not always easy to ask the right questions, to give room to different voices and really understand these. Therefore, we are developing a tool, we call it a stakeholder canvas, which helps stakeholders to easily ask the right questions on values, goals and visions for a specific plot of land and to visualize them coherently. We have used this tool now with several groups and individuals and see a couple of things. First, people are very happy to share their views. Second, sharing these views helps stakeholders to see blind spots in the perception of other stakeholders and to become aware of stakeholders who should be consulted. For example, some might think people in poverty in a neighborhood would like to work in a vegetable garden, but when you ask, it might turn out that a place where children can play is valued more. The tool thus helps to see which lines of reasoning and understanding are missing and can be strengthened in order to make the case for a project more credible for others. It makes clear for whom, with what objectives and values in mind, using which resources and motivations, a decision on the use of land is made. Why is this important? Because it helps to avoid conflicts, <coughs> conflicts and failure of a project later on. Sometimes different perspectives can go together, sometimes not. 
Developing urban space means giving more or less priority to some perspectives over others. Uncovering and understanding this is, I believe, one of the most important challenges for anyone working on the development of urban space.